what priority is in God. And we look at the scripture of Matthew 6 and 33. What it means is to turn to God first. In all things and for all things, we are to seek God first. Amen. Turn to God regarding your thoughts, all his words, anything that you have before him, you are to seek him so that you can change your mind. That's kind of a plug. Get the book, Change Your Mind by our pastor. Amen. Build your mindset in God with your God desires, your decisions. Also allow his character to become your character. Matthew 6 and 33, it said God's kingdom and God righteous and all these things will be added to you. That last part is what I want us to hone in on when he said all these things will be added to you. I don't think we focus on what those things are. Amen. So priority in God is choosing God first. So that's the key word in choosing, because every day we have to wake up and make a choice. What are we going to choose, right? For example, when you wake up in the morning, the choice could be, am I going to choose to check Facebook first, Instagram, my text messages, my notifications, my bank account, or am I going to pray? Every day we have to make a choice of what's priority in our life. We, we can go out and make a purchase or we can decide to say, God, should I make this purchase first and then stand to make a decision or wait on God? And so every day choosing priority of what is priority in your life is a choice. But if we go back to the scripture where it says he will add these things to you, the word says when we seek him and when we turn to God first, when we go after God first in his righteousness, right? He will add all those things. What are all those things? If we think about it, he's saying if we seek him first and we seek his righteousness, he'll add all of those things. And I'm like, what are all those things? But if we go back to the scripture where Matthew 6 and 25 tells us, right, we don't have to worry about anything because he said, do not worry about your life. Don't worry about what you will eat. Don't worry about what you will drink. Don't even worry about your body. That's how deep it is. He said, don't worry about nothing from what you eat to your body if we seek him first. So we simply have to seek him first and we have to worry about anything. He said, don't worry about what you wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? God will add all those things we need, material and spiritual. Amen. Um, and it got me, right? Because he, he talks to all of us. This is not just for y'all, but he was hitting me first. And a lot of times we are so amped to working and accomplishing goals and marking off this checklist that we forget what it is for priority. And yes, the word says, if you don't work, you don't eat, right? But there's a balance to how we're working and how much we're working. Um, and that was Second Thessalonians. A man that doesn't work, don't eat. But we still must put first God. The balance we have to focus on is the direction of God and then understanding his desires so that we go after it, right? Thinking about how tired you be, ask yourself, am I tired because I'm working for things that are not in God's desire or am I tired because I didn't seek God? And that was the revelation I got of when I wake up and I seek God in the morning, he gives me the strength to make it through the day, right? He will give you that understanding that will say rest, that will say sit. But when you're so focused on what you have to do, you get tired because you're working in your own strength. But if we seek him first, he's saying he will add all things, meaning even in the body, right? We won't be tired because we're doing and seeking God first. God just told us in the word not to worry because he is telling us he will provide if we put him first, if we prioritize him. Repeat after me, priority in God. Look at your neighbor and say, is God your priority? You don't have to answer though, just start, amen. So when we look at how do we prioritize God, how do we put him first? It first starts with belief. It first starts with faith. And it's our one of the scriptures we know. But I think sometimes we hear things but don't hear things, right? Um, it is impossible to please him. For, him that, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently 
see things. We get stuck on that if we, we got to believe to have faith, but do we diligently seek him after we attain that faith, right? All of this keeps going back to seeking God first. And everything in our life, the scripture keeps taking us back to God first. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, is God a priority? Still don't answer. Don't answer yet. All right. We prioritize God with believing in God and his words, standing on the word, and then we must diligently seek him. And as we're seeking him, we're not allowing our faith to waver because we know that the word just told us he will reward us because his word says that he is a rewarder of them that trust, follow, and seek him. Amen? We must also prioritize God after we seek him first. We must then believe in his word, and then we must also thank him for everything, right? So going through, it first says seek him. Then it says we must believe, and then First Thessalonians say that we must give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ. So he wants us to seek him first, then he wants us to believe, diligently seek him, and then thank him regardless of your circumstances. Can you take a moment to just thank God for whatever circumstance you have right now? Amen. Good or bad, we just want to give him thanks. When we do all these things, the word says, and I'm going to bring it back to the word every time, um, but because these are God's words and promises for our life, we are to be obedient to his ways and to his will. If we believe in God and our priorities are in God, Philippians 4 and 19 tells us, what? That God will supply some of our needs. That God will supply Amen. So according to his riches and glory. So it's those key words that we keep missing. Who riches and glory? His riches and glory. And so these words were coming out because a lot of times we read the scripture and we go after what we want. But did we say, God, what is your riches and glory? Which is everything, right? We want his riches and glories or do we want what we consider riches and glory? Mm. Look at your neighbor and say, is God your priority? Hmm. Don't answer yet. <laughs> um, as we pay attention where it says his riches and glory, that he will supply all of our needs according to that, two questions I want you to ask. The first one I want you to ask your neighbor. I told you we engage in tonight. Uh, amen. Amen. Who riches and glory are you going after right now? Then I want you to ask yourself out loud, who riches and glory am I currently going after right now? Who riches and glory do you have right now? Yep. Somebody say priority in God. Priority. Are you seeking the riches and glory of God or are you seeking the glory and riches of man? Matthew 7 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, the one who seeks, fine and the one who knocks the door will be open the key word has been seek the key word has been god first the key word has been how do we go and get all the things that are promised to us we're doing that when we seek god we're used to hearing and reading god's word but sometimes we forget to actually listen and do what it says to do amen you know how somebody gives you something or it's a it's a question you're like oh the answer is too easy it's a trick question it got to be harder well, God's word is not hard. It is the discipline and obedience, right? That is the challenge because he gives us the, he gives us the to-do list. He gives us the plans. He gives us the instructions. Then he gives us also the choice to follow. Amen? Priority in God and priority in his belief starts with we must first seek God, then believe God, then we thank God in all of our circumstances, whether good or bad. Listen and do God's word. And his word says he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And the best part about God's riches and glory is there's no shortage because he owns everything. Amen? He owns everything. So we, have, we don't have to worry about if he's blessing Brother Strict and a black in the back that we can't get blessed because he will supply all of our needs because he has everything. Amen? Amen? 
Y'all don't believe this, in his riches and glory? Repeat after me. God, I want your riches and glory. Not mine, not man's, but yours. Say that again. God, I want your riches and glory. Not mine, not man's, but yours. Amen. I want you to believe that because God is more than able. And, and going through this word, I'm like, God, it seems so simple, but we make it so hard. And it's just because of the discipline. And it's easier to go our way because we want what our heart wants. But if we seek God, then we will transform into the heart of God. We will transform into what God really wants for us. Amen? Because a lot of times what God wants for us is bigger than we can ever imagine. So when you stay in your own lane, you can never live the vision that God has for you because your heart posture is not even towards what God has to offer. And I looked and I asked, I said, well, I don't want what I want. Whatever your will is, then that's what I want. But his will means that we have to seek him every single day, every single day. You know how you get up and say, what I'm gonna eat today? What I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do this? That is the same question you say, okay, God, how do I be successful? How do I raise my child? How do I be successful in this day? And sometimes we're so focused on next month that we, he said, focus on today because tomorrow has its own worries. Every day we are to seek him for today and not tomorrow because they have its own worries, amen? Amen. The last point I want to bring out is having priority in God keeps us believers avoiding worry and anxiety. The last point, and, and he dealt with me on this, and I wanted to stick to the word, but I wanted to share. Um, I thought I was having some kind of like an attack, like my chest was super tight, and I'm like, oh, maybe it's just me working out, you know, throwing it to the wind of I was lifting too heavy, you know, trying to get strong. But this pain wouldn't leave. And I had some heavy decisions that I needed to make on a direction to go. And I didn't realize it was fear. Fear will take you physically, right? Because we think about it spiritually, but it can, it can bound you physically and you won't even know. Because if you're not seeking God, you don't even know what the attack is. I'm throwing it off of like, no, I'm just tired. My body is tired. But as soon as I got in God's presence, he said, rebuke that thing. If we seek God, he will tell us what it is that is happening. Amen. So when you seek God, not only does he take away anxiety, worry, but he also takes away fear because we know in God, we don't have fear. Amen. Amen. When we focus on God's kingdom, we get to avoid excessive worry and anxiety about material things because we know we place our trust in God's faithfulness. The word says in Matthew 6 and 34, as I said, we don't worry about tomorrow because we know that God has enough of his strength, his guidance, and direction for today. And we know God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control, or as the, other, as the word says, of a sound mind. So when we prioritize God, we can stand in faith knowing he is taking care of our needs for today, and he will continue to provide for tomorrow. But we must first do what? Seek him. Amen. Thank you, Mother. When we prioritize God, we can stand in knowing and know in the confidence as 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching him that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have. But we can't know his will and can't stand in confidence if we don't seek him first if we're not in his presence, if we're not asking him them questions. So if he did it for today, he's going to do it for tomorrow. But we must first do what? Amen. Somebody say priority in God. Um, as I close, I wanted to encourage you to find a routine that will help put God first. We are humans. Life happens. You wake up late. You got to drop 10 kids off. You got to make it to work. You got to do all those things. But we still have to find a way to prioritize God because he is the priority. Amen. So one of some few ways of that you could build a routine and keep in scripture with it is start your day with prayer and devotion. Set the clock at least 30 minutes earlier than your normal time because the word says Psalm 1 and 47, I rise before the morning and I come and cry for help because I put my hope in the word. 
Psalms 5 and 3 says, For I pray to you in the morning, O Lord, that you will hear my voice, and in the morning I will lay my prayers before you and will look up. In the morning, we got to start with God. In the morning, we got to see God. In the morning, we got to have our heart posture so that he can give us the strength just to make it through the day. We're living in 2023 with COVID, fake mosquitoes, so many things happening where if we don't seek God, we will start believing in what the world is telling us is true. Amen. Second thing you could do is create time daily and weekly that allows you to write your plans, your ideas, and thoughts down, and then seek God for direction. When we don't do that, we make decisions on direction, and we don't even have an understanding from God. We'll move too fast and then have to start over. We'll do something, and then he brings us right back to start. And we wonder why. It's like, God, we're doing so much movement, but you're still standing still. You're working so hard, but nothing is growing. When have you taken the time as Habakkuk 2 and 1, write the vision to make it plain, but then go to God and say, does this vision match what you have for me in this season? Am I doing it or is this the timing of God? You show me this, you prophesy this to me, but is this the timing? Or should I be growing right now? Should I be just hearing? Should I be looking at someone else? Should I be getting a mentor, right? We got to start seeking God for every area in our life, amen? It says, call to me and I will answer you, and I will show you great and wonderful things which you do not know. He will show us. He will literally say, go left, go right, use the color pink, use the color white. I was creating a logo, and y'all, and my favorite color is pink, but I wanted this special kind of font and all of those things. I was getting frustrated because I couldn't figure it out. And when you pray and ask God, he will give you the things you didn't even know was in your heart. I was like, what, that was in me? And it just kept flowing and flowing, and I knew it wasn't me because those thoughts were just coming, and I didn't even know they were inside. Write your plans down. Make it plain and say, God, show me how to develop this. Show me how to be aligned with what you have for my life. And he will show you the things that you didn't even know. Amen? Proverbs 3 and 6 says, seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. That's deep. He will show you which paths to take. That's on a daily basis. God, do I go left or right? I, I hate driving down Fond du Lac, okay? I am a freeway GPS girl, right? But sometimes I have to say, what is the best way to go, Siri? Because sometimes the highway is too full, and I have to take Fond du Lac because it goes through the city. So that's how we got to do God. Which way do I take today? Because the way I normally do things may not be what you're asking me to do today, right? God got to be your GPS in everything you do. What should I be eating today, right? What should I be saying to my children? We say these things, and I love us as church folks, but sometimes we talk, and we don't back up what we're saying. We talk, and we read the word, but are we living this thing out as we should? And, that's, and, and I'm including myself. Amen? Are we, we, if we're Christians, then God should be first. Amen? Amen? Build your faith by reading the Word, study the Word, stay listening to messages that teach you and motivate you on God's Word. Read the book, Change Your Mind, another plug for our leader. Um, 2 Timothy 15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word. We can only know what God is asking us if we read in His Word. Amen. It's easy to consistently listen to somebody else's message, but how you know their message is true if we're not studying it? Amen. We come out of a, a, a word ministry. Amen. And I was reading a devotion one morning, and I was following the scriptures, and I'm pretty sure it was a mistake, but the, the, the scripture that they gave wasn't the correct scripture. And if I wouldn't have been checking it, I would have just wrote down a scripture thinking I'm doing something when, no, he says, study to show yourself approved. All the scriptures that's coming from me, you shouldn't trust it. Try the spirit by the spirit, but you still should be studying for yourself. Amen? Amen. Stand on God's word. Approach him with confidence daily, knowing and believing he hears you, loves you, and wants to take care of you. Amen? So Matthew 6 and 33 encourages us as believers to prioritize our relationship with God in righteousness, trusting that God will provide for all of our needs as we seek the kingdom and live in accordance. It's God's will to bless us, but we first must do what? Seek God. In my real last closing, 
<laughs> if we keep God's, uh, if we keep God as a priority, believers will understand God above all cares about us, and our relationship with God will grow. Righteousness and God's will will continue to have us seek in the kingdom, involving everything being aligned with God and his commandments. We need to trust in God's provision, knowing that he will provide for us, that he will take care of us from the spiritual earthly needs to the spiritual needs, and then he will keep us from worry, anxiety, and fear. Amen.